Hello, everyone, and welcome to the AI Driven Action for Marketing Teams webinar, co hosted by Rivery and Anadot. My name is Kevin Bartley, and I'm the head of content at Rivery. Before we get started, I want to go over a few quick housekeeping items. First, this webinar will be recorded, and you'll receive an email with the recording tomorrow to replay or share with colleagues. So be sure to look out for that. Next, all attendees are muted. So if you have any questions during this webinar, please put them in the Q&A chat, which can be found at the bottom of the screen. We'll do our best to get those answered for you during the Q&A session. With that, I'll quickly cover the agenda for today. So today, we're going to get an inside look at Rivery Kits, instant data models that you can launch in a single click. And specifically, we're going to look at the Anadot Marketing Analytics Monitoring Kit, which you can use to deploy a start to finish solution for marketing campaign monitoring. We'll also look at two live demos, one from Rivery on how to set the kit up and another from Anadot on how to leverage AI-based marketing alerts. Finally, we'll close with a Q&A of audience questions. And for our speakers today, we have Alex Rolnick, Solutions Architect at Rivery, and Yuriv Zur, Head of Product at Anadot. Uh, so now I'm gonna turn it over to Alex to kick things off with the webinar. Awesome, Thank, thanks, Kevin. Um, so, so one of the big problems facing both technical and non-technical teams when dealing with data is the implementation of data models and data workflows. Uh, in order to you know, pull, structure, and use the data from marketing APIs such as TikTok, these models must be built, deployed, and maintained within your data architecture. Some of the key challenges uh, in terms of actually building these are the three uh, pillars that you see here. So um, to ingest the data into a data warehouse, teams need to build API connectors for each source. Uh, the challenges here include manual pipeline construction, new data source additions, API updates, and maintenance and breakages of those API connections. Uh, once the data is finally ingested, uh, code-based transformations are often required to convert the data into a usable format. Uh, this kind of locks out the business users without programming expertise. It drains development resources, and it makes quality control difficult, leading to you know, version control issues of the code. Finally, the orchestration of the data requires a combination of logic, actions, and data automation. The challenges, that, the challenges here are that it involves complex uh, processes, problems with mixing various sources and systems, scaling, and needing to build or learn a new logic engine. You know, so that's uh, a lot of different components, uh, especially for business users with uh, little to no technical backgrounds. So Rivery thought, how can we make this more manageable? Well, our solution is these pre-built marketing data workflows that we call kits. Uh, here you can see uh, a screenshot of the Rivery console uh, where we developed a bunch of kits. Um, so you can see here, and we have a monday.com kit, a Snapchat, Twitter kit, Facebook kits, um, going to different data warehouses. Uh, and I'll dive more into these during the demo so that we can see kind of what, what it looks like in the actual tool. So what are kits? Well, kits to Rivery are fully built data workflows that include everything you need to create an ELT pipeline instantly. They can include data capture and ingestion from single source or multiple sources. They can push the data into a data warehouse. Uh, they can create a, a destination tables and the metadata that goes along with those, those tables. Uh, they can transform uh, and prepare data for other uses. And they can even be scheduled 
on a specific run cadence for the users. Also, in some cases, we can push data from a data warehouse to an API source, which we call reverse ETL. So now, why would companies start using kits? Well, firstly, it, it allows the users to gain instant insights. These can generate uh, opportunities based off of data as soon as you get the data in your data warehouse. Uh, there's no maintenance of the APIs on the back end. That happens on the Rivery side. We create these uh, kits with industry best practices in mind. So we have you know, the most up-to-date metrics and uh, dimensions that go along with the marketing data. And finally, we make the kits so easy to use that anyone can use it, whether they have experience with data engineering or not. Uh, so knowing the power of kits and the increasing need for marketing analytics help, we've created the Anadot Marketing Analytics Monitoring Kit with Anadot. So this is a screenshot of the uh, kit description, but um, we'll definitely go deeper into how it's used, how it's set up, and uh, how you can gain uh, you know, AI based alerts from it during our demo. But, you know, while we were going through this kit, we developed a strong partnership. Um, we collaborated through countless meetings and working sessions to deliver this. Uh, we built out a start to finish solution using both companies' platforms. So, both, you know, Rivery kits as well as Anadot's uh, AI based alerts. And we were able to standardize the infrastructure to accommodate any kind of marketing data that is needed for uh, alerts practice. So there, are, there is definitely room for more to come from this partnership in the future. But for now, I wanted to pass it off to uh, Yuriv from Anadot to talk about Anadot's automated alerts functionality. Thanks, Alex. Uh, hi everyone, nice to meet you. My name is Yariv, and as mentioned before, I head up a product for Anadoc. Uh, can you move to the next slide? Okay. So usually when you think about marketing data and what do you do with it, you think about a dashboard. And this is just a sample dashboard, uh, uh, which you're used to see, and some of the dashboards are nice, and some are, are even nicer. But the problem is that dashboards don't scale. And if you switch to the next slide, you, you can see that while tools like Rivery enable you to get all the data which you want pretty easily, only about 0.5% of that data is actually analyzed. So making, uh, um, getting your data into wherever you want it uh, very easy and very intuitive um, only made the, the, the problem of how do you analyze that data worse, so to say. So we, you know, it's kind of a good kind of travel where it's very easy to get your data, but now how do you analyze it? And this is where Anadot comes in. If you can switch to the next one, we focus on the data analysis, and this is where our partnership with uh, Rivery comes in, that they help us with the data collection. In this case of marketing data, but as Alex mentioned, we are also looking at other use cases. So going into data analysis, what Anadot does, if you can switch to the next one. We try to create this funnel between the massive amounts of data, which you see on a daily basis, to actionable insights. And in this case, this, these are actual numbers from a customer where they have close to 40 billion events per day. And all of them are real uh, events, but out of them, you want to be able to filter only the ones which are business relevant and then create the aggregates on them because you, you don't care about a single drop on a single ad in a single browser. You care about the aggregates so you can identify the trend and understand what's going on. And what Anadot does is it looks at the aggregate data and then it learns how that data behaves. We have a bunch of machine learning algorithms which 
based on the data, apply the relevant algorithm to identify what is normal. So what is a normal behavior of your campaign across uh, uh, days, uh, days of the week, hours of the day, or even uh, holidays and special events, things, sporting events. So Anadoc knows how to take all of these into account and create the normal. What is your normal behavior of your marketing data? Uh, on top of that normal, we start to identify anomalies. Now, not all anomalies were created equal. Some are statistical anomalies, which is okay. Some are actually business critical. So on top of these anomalies, we create alerts and the alerts only show you the things which are really important for your business. So think about where we started. We started, we started something like 40 billion events per day and you end up with between one and two actual uh, alerts which are important for your business. And this is where you want to spend your time. You do not want to spend your time looking at dashboards and trying to find an needle in a stack of needles. And go up to next. And as I mentioned before, we collect the data, we analyze it, we detect, uh, and then we alert, and we, then we enable you to act. And this is kind of the next step. Because after you find the issue, and using correlation and, and several algorithms, we point you to the root cause. We want to enable you to understand what happened, where, and what is it that you do next. If you go to the next one, this is an example of how a kind of a triage screen looks like. We had a drop in revenue. We tell you it's because there was an anomaly with your campaign impression, and it's most likely in Germany. And we enable you to perform certain actions which are predefined. So think about where we started. We started with being able to easily connect all your data pipelines into one place, regardless of the marketing platform, right? Because what Alex is going to show you is normalizing the data, regardless of the different marketing platforms into one data source. And based on that, with Anadoc, you can easily identify the critical issues and act to remediate them. And Alex, I turn it to you. Let's start the demo. Uh, great, thank you, Riri. Um, so before we actually get into the, the demo in the platform, I wanted to kind of level set and say that there are definitely some configuration steps that need to happen before the, the kit can be run on the Ribery side. Um, but it should be very easy to set up, especially if you have the prerequisites ready to go. Um, these include, you know, connecting, being, having a connection to Anadot and being able to get the, the refresh key and the data collection keys, uh, as well as having a Ribery account to actually download the kit. And then um, the last prerequisite is to have a marketing table already in your Snowflake uh, instance or other data warehouse to push to Anadot to gain these, uh, these alerts from. So once you have those prerequisites, then you could start following the kit configuration steps listed below, um, which I will go through in the demo, but they're basically to you know, download a copy of this Google Sheet and fill it out with the, uh, the marketing tables information, uh, and then add some variables to your Ribery account, uh, add the connections to when you're downloading the kit, and then run or schedule the, the river. And it's as easy as that to get your tables information to Anadot to start this alert process. So with that being said, um, I'm going to stop the share there and move the share to um, sorry, I'm going to move the share to our uh, Rivery platform. Okay. So uh, now what you're seeing here is a view of the Anadot Marketing Analytics Monitoring Kit within Rivery's Kit Hub. So in order to get here, you can go to the Starter Kits and then search for this Anadot Marketing Analytics Monitoring Kit, where you can then see kind of a high-level description of what the kit does, any specific links that you need for more information, what's included in the kits, and a much more detailed view of 
the directions on how to set it up before running it. So once we go into a Rivery account, uh, like I said before, one of the um, one of the prerequisites for running this kit is to have a marketing table already in your data warehouse. Um, within your data warehouse, to get this table, uh, for an example, I use the Facebook ads kit that Rivery also has. So I downloaded the kit onto our Rivery account. I updated everything I needed to, and then I ran this logic step to create this Rivery Facebook ads table. And this, is, this will be the table that I push to Anadot to start getting alerts. Um, so once I have that table, then I can go to the kit hub menu or the kit console menu where I can see all of the kits that Rivery has, uh, where you saw a screenshot of in the presentation. And then I can move to the Anadot marketing analytics monitoring kit where you can see all of the information that we were talking about previously. Um, but before, but instead of going through that, I'll go through the steps on how to set this up. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a copy of a Google Sheet and input the information of our marketing table that we want to move to Anadot. So we can get columns A and B by using our Snowflake query here and uh, it basically selects the table name and the column names. Uh, so you can copy and paste that into your um, Google Sheet and then come into the classification aggregation section and select either a dimension or a measure and a specific date key. And then for each measure, how you want those measures aggregated on the Anadot side to come up with the alerts. So once this sheet is fully filled out, the next step would be to input all of your variables that you need to have the kit run. We set, we set this up with variables to make it as dynamic as possible. So if you uh, need to change your, your database and schema for Snowflake that you're pulling the table from, or if you need to change your Google Sheet, you can just change it right here and it'll pick a different Google Sheet. Um, so once you have these variables set up in the tool, you are pretty much ready to run. The only thing that you'll need to do next is go to the kit, select use kit, and then input your connections in the connection portal. So for instance, we already have connections here. So we'll put our Anadoc connection, our Google Sheets connection, and then our Snowflake connection. And you can see that if we, if we press next here, it'll download the rivers within this kit into our rivery account, which will give you a list similar to this one. Now, once we have these rivers in our account, it's going to be very easy to go from here to Anadot. All we'll have to do is go to this Anadot kit logic river and basically hit run on the bottom. This logic river is where we developed the code to change the table into a uh, JSON formatted request body for Anadot's API. So it's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, structural changes and transformations of data, but um, we made this as dynamic as possible. So no matter what, as long as your Google Sheet is filled out correctly, um, this this will work as, and it's as easy as pressing the run button on the bottom here. So in the interest of time, I already ran this successfully and pushed data to Anadot, where I think Yuriv will now go through some um, alerts that we can get from Rivery's Facebook ads data. Let me share my screen and we'll go. Here we go. Okay, so welcome to Anadot. Um, what you're seeing here is uh, um, the, one of the basic screens of Anadot where you have many different connections and among them, many different integrations. And among them, of course, is the new uh, uh, Rivery integration. 
And basically, once the 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 river uh, which uh, Alex created ran, then the data is already in Anadopt, and you can see here that a new data source has been created automatically. So I have your like, clicks, comments, impressions, all the different measures, and all the different dimensions. Okay, the cardinality is is calculated automatically. So all you need to do is just send the data and Anadot will uh, automatically uh, uh, create this or represent this as a stream of data points uh, on a time series, which now you can start working with. Now, as I said before, one of the, the easiest things is to start creating a dashboard, right? So this is your standard uh, marketing dashboards where you're tracking your different campaigns and this is all based on the delivery data. So I have here my clicks, impressions, and spend, uh, where I can filter them based on the different ads and, of course, different campaigns. So if I take one campaign uh, or more, and here we've created these ratios. Uh, for instance, I care about clicks per impression or cost per impression. I have care about cost per click. Uh, and, and my CTR and, of course, my total spend, which is always a concern when you're looking at, at marketing data. And the, the beauty of this one is that I don't have to filter it just according to Facebook or LinkedIn or Snapchat or, or whatever uh, 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 advertising platform you're going to use next because it's based on the same normalized data, so the same a uh, 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 measure here, it's called Facebook ads because this was the test data we played with, but it will work across all your different marketing uh, campaigns. Now, dashboards are nice, but as we said, they don't scale. So this is where we start looking at the data to start learning it. So here's an example of some metrics, again, from Facebook advertising, okay? And you see that here, I'm starting to look at the raw data of the different metrics. You notice that you have your line here and you have the uh, the, the background or the, the shade behind it. We call it the sleeve. This is actually the baseline. So this is where Anadot automatically starts learning the behavior. Now, these are all pretty new metrics. So the baseline is pretty wide, but over time, it does get more and more narrow and more and more accurate and it detects uh, issues which you have which go down from your uh, baseline. So you can see here the baseline started pretty wide and it goes more and more narrow and then you can start getting alerts because at the end of the day this is what you care about. You want to know when something is wrong. So here is an example of an alert where I see here the cost dropping on one of my campaigns. Now, usually when the cost is dropping, that's a good thing, but it's actually a bad thing when you're running a campaign because the issue here was that I reached my budget and then the platform, the, the advertising platform just shut down my, my campaign because I maxed out uh, all the budget which I had. And in this case, this drop is something which alerts me that I had an issue with a specific uh, but and looking at this, remember we want to make this actionable. And you see here that I see this drop, okay? And it happened in this campaign. And now I can start performing various actions to identify the issue, okay? So I can go into Google Analytics or in Salesforce or whatever action I define per that alert. I can check the timeline, when did the anomaly start and when was the alert configured and add additional comments, uh, assign this to, to other colleagues to look into. So basically perform all the investigation of the issue inside the platform. But this means that I spend my time only on the actual issues which I had with my uh, advertising. So I can still go with, with this approach of looking at a dashboard but at the end of the day, you want to work in a push mode versus a pull mode and look only at the things which are really important for you. I think that's it for my demo. Um, Alex, back to you. Great. Thanks, Yuri. Um, so now we will open this up to 
um, to a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, yeah, I saw that there was a question from Greg, I think, about the iOS and the and the privacy. And uh, just to reiterate on the question, um, how do we handle the issue of privacy and uh, with our mobile uh, uh, platforms not allowing to look at user data? And the, the short answer is uh, we don't care. Uh, but let me elaborate. We don't care because we didn't look at private at the pri or PII data even before that. So in order to monitor uh, your marketing campaign, we do not look at specific users' behavior and specific user details. We only look at the aggregates. If you remember the slide I've shown before, you only care about the big picture. So how is my campaign doing in Spain? Or how is my campaign doing in this version of iOS uh, in, in Germany? And you don't look at the PII data. So we, we take extra care um, uh, to only look at aggregated data which is completely anonymized. Um, and, and this also allows us to you know, provide solutions for uh, financial markets, et cetera, and not just advertise. So this means that this recent change, which I, I personally think it, it's very good, uh, hasn't affected the way you would use the Anodot in, in that sense. I hope that answered the question. Great, thanks, Yariv. Um, we've also, we've got some additional questions here in the queue. Uh, if you have any more questions, um, the Q and A is still open, so feel free to ask, but now I'm gonna ask some that we've already had, that we've seen here. Um, one question we got was, how long does it take to launch a kit? So I would, I would direct this towards Alex. Sure, yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, so for a kit to be up and running, I would say it would take, less than an hour to to get it started um that means you know learn about the kit learn the configuration directions and then start running it all within under an hour so that's a fully built data model and workflow awesome and uh, another one we got looks like um what data warehouses can i use with this kit uh, that's a, also a great question. Uh, for now, the kit is only built for Snowflake, but we are currently in um, in progress of making the kit available for BigQuery as well. Awesome. And we have one here for Yariv. Uh, Yariv, what, what campaign anomalies can I track in Anadot? That's one of the questions we got. So when you're looking at campaign data, um, usually the things which are worrying you are, uh, first of all, uh, overspend. So maybe some misconfiguration of the campaign, some, you know, someone put in a, an, an additional zero on the budget or something like that, so you would get an overspend compared to what you plan to spend on the budget. This is number one. Obviously, the usual metrics of a, a drop or, or spike in, in your conversion rate, so across all the conversion funnel. So if you have a what you expect, let's say, uh, your normal uh, conversion rate between impressions to clicks, or let's say between clicks and, and purchases, um, so monitoring across different funnel um, is something you, which you would usually try to look at. And of course, like I showed, any kind of anomalies where you expect something to behave in a certain way and it dropped. And, and the beauty of, of, of the approach with Anadot, you don't have to anticipate in advance what are the events which are going to happen. You just say, you know, if this doesn't behave as usual and, you know, trust us to, to understand on our own what is the usual, we will let you know. So you don't have, you don't have to spend time in creating these rules or thresholds uh, if this goes above x or below y etc uh, the, the, the approach here is completely autonomous so you don't need to set up a lot of time in creating all these alerts great and looks like another one we had here was do rivery and anadot plan to collaborate on on future projects 
I, I guess I'd direct this at both of you. Maybe I'll, I'll start. We already have several projects going on uh, uh, within our joint customers. So a lot of our uh, Anadot customers are actually using Riveree to extract data from Anadot uh, in order to, to run their own reporting. So let's say you want to understand how much alerts did you get per month uh, uh, compared to how many metrics you sent and create your own funnel to, to understand the value you get from Anadot. So we have several of our joint customers who are just using Riveree as kind of the ETL or ELT channel to get data from Anadot into whatever uh, uh, data warehouse they already have, um, and both in push and pull mode. And this is just one project. Um, Alex, if you want to elaborate on additional use cases. Um, I, I think the only other thing I'll, I, I'd add is that we, we do have another um, kit uh, with respect to Anadot where we pull in the business alerts from Anadot to whatever target or source that you want using uh, an API action. So, you know, if you, if you want the full, you know, going from your data warehouse to Anadot and back from Anadot, uh, we do have um, kits that you can use for that. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's definitely going to be more from this, this partnership. Um, but that's, that's kind of all I'll say for now.